Hello there again, guys, and welcome back to the second installment of Did Dinosaurs Slash Other Prehistoric Animals Coexist with Humans? Whatever clever name I will call this series in the future. Today I will examine another alleged depiction of an extinct animal by ancient cultures that young earth creationists consider strong evidence of dinosaurs and man coexisting, and that is the Black Dragon Canyon Pterosaur in Utah. When I once was an evolution-denying young earth creationist myself, I was very convinced by this guy, and remember first hearing about it from the creationist Kim Ham during a presentation. In, in a canyon called Black Dragon Canyon, you find this picture. It's of a winged creature. It looks like it has a sort of a bump on its head, a crest on its head, and it looks like it has webbed feet. And it's a big flying creature in Black Dragon Canyon. Uh, it, a close-up will show you it's got a crest on its head, it's got webbed feet, and in fact, we had our artist draw a picture of it and, and uh, compare it to, say, a bird with feathers. Now, when the Indians drew this picture, they didn't put feathers on it. It doesn't have feathers. It's got webbed feet, got a crest on its head. Do you know what is fascinating about that particular canyon in Utah? I'll tell you what's fascinating. They find fossil bones of pterodactyls in that canyon. You know what I believe? You might think I'm crazy, but I believe this. I think the Indians saw those bones flying. In other words, I think they saw those creatures. I don't believe they're millions of years old. You know, there is a lot of that sort of evidence. That doesn't... I can't prove to you that dinosaurs live with people and the Indians saw dinosaurs and the Indians saw pterodactyls. I can't prove that sort of thing to you. But here's evidence that's consistent with it that the general public doesn't get to hear about, which is really, really sad. And I believe they need to hear about this. Now, if you were a young kid like me, I'd have to say that's pretty convincing stuff. But, because I'm an insufferable veteran skeptic now, let's break down what Kim Ham claimed, and see if this Black Dragon Canyon pterosaur is actually positive evidence of pterosaurs in man or not. Well, first and foremost, let's examine Mr. Ham's claim that the Black Dragon Canyon was discovered to have pterosaur fossils in it, in particular pterosaur fossils of the toothless short-tailed variety, such as Pteranodon and Quetzalcoatlus, which most resembled the subject of the illustration. Upon further research, I discovered that Mr. Ham was at least correct in saying Black Dragon was part of a prehistoric fossil formation, as Black Dragon is part of the Moenkopi Formation, which spans from New Mexico, northern Arizona, Nevada, southeastern California, eastern Utah, and western Colorado. I'm not surprised at all to find that Kit Ham disagrees with modern paleontologists on the dating of the Moenkopi Formation, which was about 240 million years old or older, spanning from the lower to middle Triassic period. Black Dragon, in particular, is one of the oldest sites in the formation, having been dated to be from the early Jurassic. Black Dragon, according to paleontologists, is interpreted as a marginal marine mudflat, probably tidal flat. As far as I know, very little, if any, fossils of fauna were discovered at the site. Additionally, I couldn't find any source supporting pterosaurs in the canyon itself. Numerous fossils discovered at other sites in the Wankofee Formation, mostly Arizona, have been found, but most of these are basal fish such as coelacanths, lungfish, and hypodont sharks, amphibians such as spondyls, synapsids like diectodons, and archosaurs such as the spinosaur-like Arizonosaurus. Dinosaurs are relatively rare in this formation, and it is mostly dominated by weird early reptiles. As it turns out, zero pterosaur remains have been found at the formation, with one website I found going as far to say the flying reptile pterosaurs are conspicuously absent. However, this might be because the small, hollow bones of these animals are not commonly preserved as fossils in the kinds of Mesozoic sediment in northern Arizona. It is likely pterosaurs existed at the Moenkofi Formation, but going as far to say that the black dragon possessed fossils of pterosaurs is not evidently true. I was unable to find any record of pterosaurs being discovered there, and it is possible that this might have been a complete fabrication by Ham. And even if pterosaurs were eventually discovered at the formation, the pterosaurs at this time period were not the ones with reduced tails, toothless beaks, and crests like those of the late Jurassic and Cretaceous, and thus most similar to the ones depicted. The ones that existed at the time period of Moenkopi possessed long tails, lacked crests, and toothed beaks, far from the subject of the drawing. Well, now that we have addressed the first claim about pterosaur fossils in the canyon, let's get to talking about the painting itself. Numerous other paintings exist in Black Dragon Canyon. These have been attributed to the Native American Friedmont culture that lived all throughout Utah circa 180 to 1100 AD. Remnants of their existence are quite numerous, as one can find petroglyphs of humanoids, tools, spirits, lizards, and mammalian quadrupeds such as goats on the walls of canyons and caves, as well as pottery and figurines. One can easily see that the Fremont culture wanted to depict the various animals they encounter throughout their daily lives. Thus, it would make sense if pterosaurs coexisted with them that they would depict them as well. 
Well, upon closer inspection, the Black Dragon Canyon Pterosaur is not created by the Fremont culture. As it turns out, the white outline that gives the petroglyph the vaguely pterosaur shape is of 20th century origin. A few decades ago, it appears, someone scaled up the canyon and vandalized the original illustration with chalk. The winged monster described by Mr. Ham was later revealed to be a product of misidentification and defacement, as modern archaeologists using more advanced X-ray fluorescent devices were able to see what the original ancient illustration looked like under the more recent chalk. The beak, crest, and head of the pterosaur were revealed to be a man with his arms out. The legs, tail, and body were revealed to be that of a humanoid spirit. The wings were revealed to be the head of said spirit, and two mammalian quadrupeds likely sheep. Additionally, several other previously unseen illustrations were unhidden, such as a snake. These depictions of these creatures are almost identical to those found in other Fremont depictions. This is what the original Fremont illustration looked like before the vandalism. The whole concept of this being a depiction of a pterosaur has been thoroughly debunked, and using the Black Dragon Canyon as evidence of pterosaurs and man coexisting is just downright dishonest now that we know the truth. Thanks for watching this installment of Trade the Explainer. This video is the beginning of a collaboration series with the Science Channel stated clearly, as me and him are starting a series where we'll be examining and evaluating the various evidences of coexistence of dinosaurs and man. We will discuss everything from dinosaur and human footprints side by side, to artwork such as this video, to alleged T-Rex meat within a fossilized bone. So check out his channel by clicking on the link in the description or on screen. Also, I want to apologize for the long wait for this video's release. I've been super busy with life and work stuff for the past few months, and I haven't found a whole lot of time to work on these videos. Hopefully I can churn them out a lot quicker, but please understand I've got a lot on my plate right now. Next video will either be a paleo profile on Andrew Sarkis or Australopithecus, so stay tuned.